Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Teacher's cheating scheme during a crucial exam is exposed by a vigilant proctor, leading to his suspension. The second story. Manager reneges on the vacation agreement. The employee stays committed during their vacation, only to resign later. The company is forced to pay out their accumulated vacation time, and the manager faces consequences. The third story. Clever employee exploits the company's calendar system, demanding every weekend off. Today's first story is... Why don't you tell somebody who gives an SH, bro? All right, then. This happened back in the day with a teacher I used to work with who taught a class of adult students who took a very high-stakes exam. This high-stakes exam, unless you pass this, you couldn't qualify for scholarships, some aspects of financial aid, etc., was multiple choice, and I was part of the campus's proctoring team. This particular teacher didn't like me very much, and I was fine with that. We had different personalities, and that's okay. This was an important test. This exam is an important piece of data that the Harakoma County Community College System, fictitious name, uses to compare its success to sister schools across the county, and even across the state. It's not an ACT or SAT, but it's the junior college version of a GRE, basically. It just happens to be administered in this particular course, which is required by all who attend that major in pretty much anything. Anyway, sorry that this detail was added later. I'm writing this as I'm remembering the details. I copied and pasted this from the bottom to this paragraph that it's in, so sorry if it seems choppy. So anyway, during the actual test it was my job to make sure the classroom was fully functional. Math helps were covered up, etc. This included covering up the four quadrants that were labeled in the four corners. The teacher, we'll call Captain Cheat, was okay with most of my suggested, demanded changes. Before the kids took the test, I made sure we covered up the four quadrants, but Captain Cheat was determined to have the four letters in the four corners up still. They were literally framed posters with fancy decorated letters, A, B, C, and D. I was like, um, I don't see how this could help, but sure. Anyway, the students started walking in, looking at the sparse walls, seemed panic for a second, then relieved to see that there were still letters up. This is my first clue of weirdness, but should have really been my second. During the test, I saw the teacher walking around the room looking at kids' answers. I noticed a very interesting pattern that if you didn't pay attention, you would miss. No words were spoken. He would walk past a student. The student would look up at the teacher. The teacher would look away into the middle distance. The student would look at the same middle distance, then bubble in an answer. It was a little weird, but a very consistent pattern. I then paid a little closer attention and saw that some students were better at hiding what the teacher was doing than others. Some kids didn't look where the teacher looked. They just knew what to bubble somehow. Then it happened. A student took their pencil, pointed at a bubbled linen letter, looked at the teacher, the teacher looked at me, I looked away, and saw the teacher look intently at his picture at the corner of the room that said D. The kid then clearly changed their answer to D, even mouthing D, kind of whispering it to themselves even. Wow. When testing was over, and every student handed in their Scantron and left, I immediately approached the students saying, I can't believe you. Impressive but disappointing. You're literally cheating these students out of an education. You either have them retake this without your magic signs, or I go to the board. He responds, Why don't you tell somebody who gives an SH? Hashtag good luck proving it. Yes, this dude cringingly said hashtag. Enter malicious compliance. The first part of Captain Cheater's comment set me off, and at that point, honestly, I wasn't probably going to go ham on this guy. This is 100% due to the additional cockified cringe factor of saying hashtag. Maybe I'm just jealous because I'm supposed to be cocky plus cringe and he's killing my vibe, but either way, I will, I will tell somebody who gives a shot, the provost. The provost indeed gave an SH. A community college aside, this is a community college, which some people see as lesser than, but I see community college as truly superior for the first two years of college courses. The requirements to teach are having a master's plus five years experience in the field they are teaching. And at the university, you'd be in class of 500 and never really hear from the actual professor. It's cheaper and higher quality education, pretty much across the board. It's a no-brainer. So those community college haters out there, whatever, aside over. So anyway, 
I tell the Provost, and Captain Cheater is not just brought before the board, but is put on administrative leave instantly. Like, instantly. He wasn't sent away in handcuffs or anything. The stakes weren't that high, but this was an exam that affected a lot of people's money, and in turn lives. This guy looked particularly peeved, more so than usual, and I know for a fact that he hasn't worked at the university level since, based on his LinkedIn that says he's working at a Jargit warehouse. Edit. Was there any proof needed to prove this? They contacted students alphabetically right down the list. I wasn't allowed to be a part of this process because the guy claimed V for Vendetta. I honestly wouldn't have asked questions that weren't loaded just automatically. So I, glad now that's how it played out. It was like hours when they had their proof. This was my first semi-supervisory role in the education system. I had just got my master's at that point. So I was a little, you're ruining the fabric of space and time. Anytime something remotely negative was going on, it probably didn't ruin their education. I was just peeved at his lack of giving an SHness, despite totally getting that vibe. What happened to the students in this exam? They retook it, the part that affects their financial aid, where if they test below a certain score they can't get full FAFSA funding until they passed was nullified. Who knows, maybe this guy was Robin Hood. Not believing in a system that discriminates based on intelligence. Not until now did I synthesize this information. A decade later. The second story is, working during my planned vacation, then have to pay me extra when I leave. I'd been working at this company for about three years. I had been consistently growing in my role and eventually was giving a project to own, with one to two other team members if needed, but it was a major project with a quick turnaround. I determined I could do it myself, though it would be tight, and since I was hoping for a promotion, I took on the project solo. I was able to deliver the project slightly ahead of schedule, and with better quality than expected, which allowed us to make a huge sale. The head of the company gave me an award in an all-hands meeting for the work I did, and my boss let me know I was on track for an end-of-year promotion, with a nice pay raise and more responsibilities. But I was needed in another part of the business, so I was going to have to transfer under a new manager that was notoriously hard to work with. I transferred to this manager in the first meeting we had to get on the same page. I brought up that I had a three-week planned vacation in four months. I had never taken vacation, so I had six weeks saved up and did not want to start losing it. He told me, of course, that would be fine, and we would be able to make it work. About a week later, we have our first meeting with our product team. They had a new, large project idea and wanted it to be released in just three months. As my team looked over the details, we knew this was a six to eight month project at best, and it would be better to deliver it in smaller increments, so they still had something to show in three months, or we would need to push out the schedule. My boss was adamantly against both. So throughout the next week, he made us have last three to four hour brainstorming sessions every day, but he would not even tell us until around 3 p.m., forcing all of us to work late every day that week. At the end of the week, there was no way we could figure out to deliver everything on the shorter timeline, and so my boss asked me to stay behind after the meeting. For another hour, he railed against me, saying I was failing at this project, and that he could not see me getting a good annual review in four months, and that a promotion wasn't even on the table. This annual review would also include the project I had just received an award for, and is supposed to encompass 12 months of work, but he was basing this off the first two weeks on this new team. At this point, I knew he was ready to use me as a scapegoat for his bad management, and started applying elsewhere. We continued working on the project and sure enough, at the end of three months, we were still far from being able to deliver and my boss was getting heat from up above. Right around this time, I received an offer for another company. That would be the promotion I wanted and an even larger pay increase. I accepted the offer and negotiated my start date to be after my vacation, now three weeks away. That same day, my boss calls me into his office and tells me we need to talk about this vacation. I reminded him that we had talked about it months before and that everything is booked, flights, hotels, etc. He would not let up and told me there was no way I could take three weeks off with how behind schedule we are. He told me I could go on my trip, but I could not take vacation and would be expected to be online during our business hours throughout the trip. 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. local time in my vacation spot. QMC. Every morning while on vacation, I would log on at 4 a.m., check emails, answer questions on our internal chat, and do the minimum work expected, logging off as soon as it hit 1 p.m., all without burning any vacation. With one week left in vacation, I requested a conference call with my boss to give him my two weeks notice. He was shocked and tried everything to get me to stay and finish out the project, including bringing back up a possible promotion. I told him I had already accepted a job with a start date upcoming, 
I worked my last two weeks before moving on to my new job. Because my boss required me to not take vacation, the company had to pay out all my accrued vacation once I left, a little less than seven weeks at this point, including the three weeks I had originally planned to take. Now short-staffed, I heard from other co-workers that the project missed two more adjusted deadlines, and eventually the manager was demoted before being let go from the company. About six months later, the head of the first company asked me to lunch to offer me a role taking over my former boss's old position. I negotiated an even higher pay increase, as well as company equity, and ended up going back there for three more years. Edit. It was mostly me wrapping up the current work I had on the project and documenting my pieces for others to take over. You could tell he was mad the last week, but there really wasn't anything he could do at that point. I definitely didn't work as hard as I did for the months leading up to it. It was still the one negative aspect of the whole thing though, but the extra three weeks pay was still nice. The last story is, I can't have weekends off as promised, no problem. I'm a delivery driver, so I was but a wee naive lad in my junior year of high school when I got my first job at good old McDonald's, which happened to be the busiest one in my state. I was excited to start working and actually earn money to pay for gas and leisure for myself on the weekends. I had recently moved to another city close to where I grew up and where all my friends lived, still very close friends to this day, and I grew up privileged with a $100 monthly allowance for gas to drive to school and such. It wasn't enough to actually have fun on weekends, considering gas prices due to the distance I had to drive to see my friends. That was when I decided a part-time job would solve my problems until I graduated and went to college. So I applied to McGranald's since they offered decent pay and flexible scheduling. Remember that part for later. My schedule when I started was three weeknights after school and Saturday or Sunday mornings. I worked this schedule for about a month and a half before I got sick of missing out on parties the night before I had to work the next day. It was draining me socially. I was working about 20-ish hours a week on top of school, so I was getting home late to do homework most nights and couldn't properly enjoy my weekends like I wanted to. I talked with my general manager and told them I wouldn't be able to work weekends anymore, but I'm more than willing to work an extra weeknight to make up for it and they agreed. This went fine for another two months, and I got good at the job and became one of their more reliable workers since I was able to cover any position they needed me to. Then they decided to have a talk with me, informing me that I would have to start working weekends because they didn't have enough people in the morning rushes to be able to meet the McDee's quota for service. I told them that I was told I wouldn't have to work weekends since I traded Saturday or Sunday for an extra weeknight shift, but they told me I would work only a few hours on some weeknights and would still be working the same amount of hours per week. I had no choice in the matter. I was peeved to say the least until I remembered their policy for getting days off. As long as you asked for days off in their calendar book two weeks in advance, it was a guaranteed day off. You guys can see where this is going. I maliciously complied and asked for every weekend off for the next four months in the calendar book. Sure, my paycheck took a hit, but I didn't care. Time with the boys was more rewarding than an extra $45 a paycheck. It wasn't until 2.5 months later that I got pulled into the office and my manager asked me why I asked for all the weekends off for those months. I told them that I got the job because I was under the assumption that the scheduling was flexible but I was told I had to work weekends. The manager looked absolutely defeated and tried to compromise for every other weekend. This was when I got another malicious thought in my head and said, okay, I guess if I had to. Cue malicious compliance part two. This time, instead of asking for every weekend off, I asked for every other weekend off. Another month went by before they started scheduling me for weekdays only, but with slightly longer weeknight shifts like I wanted. I only got away with this because turnover rates were high and I was able to work any position like I said so I knew there was no way they were going to fire me. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.